Hey, what is up guys? We are back. So last time we left off, we actually had um, every single buttons inside of a resource folder, then level folder. All of these buttons or thumbnails, they were inserted inside of our um, level button container. So if we have two of these, they were actually there was actually two buttons uh, being spawned inside of that. So what we're going to do with this episode is we're actually going to bind the unclick event for every single of these buttons. So if we take a look at this while the scene is playing, um, when we're clicking that button, nothing was to happen, but we know, because we did it before, we know that whenever we click on a button, the uh, inside of the button component, there is this event here called unclick that is being played. Now what we want to do is we want to put a function inside of that. Um, usually we do the plus sign and then we go fetch our function on whichever object it is. So say it was the main menu, then we will go down here, main menu, and then use whatever we made. But we're not allowed to do that because our button, does, they don't exist when the game is not playing. So we can't just go ahead and assign them a specific, a specific function. We could if we decided not to uh, create our array of levels uh, dynamically. In case we had like static, we know we're gonna have like say five levels then we could go ahead and just create our button and assign function to each one of these, but we're not going to be doing that because we want to do it dynamically. We want to be able to just add new uh, thumbnails to our resource folder and it's going to pretty much just tell the game that we have new levels. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go back inside the main menu script and inside of here we are going to declare inside of our function, so for each uh, thumbnails, we're going to, to declare a string actually, and we're gonna call that uh, scene name. And the name of the scene is going to equal thumbnail.name. So we're gonna be using the same exact um, name for the thumbnail and for the scene. Now, if you wanted to have different scene name than the thumbnails, you would have to do this here, so you just go ahead and do whatever application, uh, not application, but modification to the string you want. But uh, that's how I'll be doing it, so I'll be just be having the same exact string, does not really matter. And okay, so we have the name of the thumbnail here, or actually the name of the scene. Now what we're going to do is we are actually going to take our button, so we're gonna go back here we're going to take this button, we're going to tell, okay, go ahead and fetch the button component, so this thing, and inside of that, we are going to go look for this unclick event, so we can manually, inside of the code, not manually, but automatically, uh, create a new, uh, a new element in the unclick here. So the way we do this is we start by a get component, so container dot get component, we're getting the button component, and now we do dot unclick, which is pretty much just our event, and after that we're going to do add listener. Now this takes a, um, this pretty much takes an action, and actually this is quite hard to understand, so I don't expect you to just, uh, you know, understand what this does, but just try to tag along. What we're going to do is we're going to open parentheses just like this, then we're going to do equal greater than and we're going to send a function in here. Uh, before that, let's go ahead and create ourselves a function. I forgot to do that. Uh, sorry about this. I'll just close this off like this for now. And below the start, just below start, we're going to do private void maybe a load level and that's going to take uh, a string that we're going to call scene name, just like this. Okay, now we have this function, we need to put it inside of the add listener here. So to do that, let's open up parentheses, equal, greater than, and then we do the name of the function, in our case, load level, and then we send it a, a scene name, which we define here, so scene name, just like this. Now don't try to optimize this by putting a thumbnail.name in here, but because that's not going to work you absolutely need to declare your string in your for each and then put the scene name in here instead. Okay, so now by pressing this, uh, this function should now be called every single time we click on a button and the parameter is going to change. 
depending on which button we click. So say we do a debug.log and we actually just shout the scene name. We go back in the game, press play. Now we click on this, it says one training, which is the exact same name as the thumbnail. Now say we were to modify that thumbnail name or actually just let's just duplicate it, call this one two tests, or actually to test like this and we put that as a sprite hit apply now we hit play this is our first thumbnail it says one training and this one says two tests so already there we have a difference in between these two so that's perfect for um, loading the scene let's go back in here and we are simply going to load the scene now so I removed the, deb the debug.log and uh, I was about to do a application.load level, but it is now obsolete, so they want us to use the scene manager instead, and that's exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to listen to Unity. Now to use the scene manager, you need to go up here in your using statement, and we need to start using the Unity engine.scene management. Now by having this included up here, we're now allowed to do scene manager dot um, load scene and we're going to load using the scene name which we get in parameter just like this okay again let's go back in our game test this out press on this guy it says scene one underscore training could not be loaded and two underscore test could not be loaded and that's perfectly normal because we don't we don't have the scenes uh, like that just yet and they're not added to the build settings Okay, so let's go ahead and create our first game scene so we know if this works or not. What we're going to do is we're going to go, well first, save off your uh, current scene by hitting Ctrl S on the keyboard. And then we're going to do File, New Scene, or Ctrl N. And we're going to save this new scene as one underscore training, or pretty much any name that you gave your thumbnail. So um, I'm also going to put this in another folder. So inside of my scene folder, I'm going to make another folder called levels. And I'll just drag and drop this in here. So this is my first level right here, the one underscore training. Now, if we go back in our main menu and we press on play, then we press on the button, it's not going to work just yet because we need to add it to the build settings as well. To do that, we are going to go in file build settings and now we're going to add every single scene we're going to be using so uh, first one being the main menu so make sure that you are inside of the main menu like I am right now then we're going to do add open scenes and once it is in the list we are going to go in uh, your first level then we're going to go ahead and add open scenes again and that is something you're going to need to do every single time you add a new level so pretty much the, the workflow of adding a new level in, implies um, creating a new thumbnail and creating a new scene using that thumbnail and then after that adding it to the build settings. Okay, so one more time, let's go back in the main menu, hit play and level one is here. Now if we press on level two, this is not going to work because we don't have a scene called two underscore test. But if we hit on, uh, if we click on level one, we have now loaded our first level. And as you can see right here, it says one underscore training. That's the current scene we're in. And if we go back, this is main menu, one underscore training. Okay, so that pretty much concludes it for this fast video. In the next one, we're actually going to start playing with the camera a little bit for our main menu and maybe start looking at the shopping part of the menu. So guys, thanks again for watching. If you have any question or comment, please leave them in the comment section below. Also, if this was helpful to you or if you enjoyed it, please leave it a like. It really helps me out. And uh, subscribe for more tutorials like these. Thanks again for watching and I'll be seeing you in the next episode.